This is a corporate gig today, it's during the daytime, there's everything against me, but you're actually a lovely audience. But it's weird, you realise when you first come on that technically you're under pressure and the audience will judge you joke to joke whether they like you, whether they trust you or not, right? I just want to reassure you so we can all relax, I was under no pressure. You were. Because what you don't realise is a rule in the same way you would judge me, a comedian, I'll judge you, an audience, right? And I just want to let you know, so far, I think you're doing really well. <laughs> really, I think you've got something special about you. I think you guys keep this up, you could be playing bigger gigs in a few years, right? <laughs> really feel it's there, right? So, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you uh, 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 on a little journey with a little story, right? Now, this is a story I told in my first solo show in Edinburgh, which was called, strangely enough, Gutless. Um, and uh, it's a true story, but I want you to trust me, I want you to relax, you can see I'm here, so everything's going to work out with this story that I'm going to tell you. And it's okay to laugh when I tell you it, because some of it's funny, uh, but some of it's a bit sad, right? But everything will come good and come out the other side with me, so just trust me on this one, right? Now obviously over the years, uh, the health's played havoc. I've been in and out of the hospital at different points. Uh, very lucky to have been very well the last seven years, pretty much since I've had my feet, if I'm honest with you, right? But it wasn't always this perfect. And when I first got the feed, uh, initially at that point I had a, a jejunostomy as well, which is a high output stoma colostomy. When you're a young man, that's quite, you know, it's not the best of situations, right? And I was, uh, I had that and I was on the feed and I was on the feed 23 and a half hours a day. I just got it. Um, so I was really kind of restricted to a maximum of half an hour a day I could get out. I was stuck in this pokey little flat in Leighton, which is reason enough to be depressed, trust me, right? But stuck in, in this little pokey flat in Leighton and uh, stuck on this machine 23 and a half hours a day. I was rationed half a glass of water a day and I couldn't eat. I wasn't allowed to eat. So I guess you could imagine that's really not the most happiest of situations to be in, right? Now, if I'm honest with you, I, I used to smoke a bit of the wacky backy, right? I know I'm not alone there amongst this room. I'm sure there's someone who does or did or once, yeah, 60 years ago or whatever, right? But I used to smoke a bit of the wacky backy. And when I was stuck in this flat in Leighton, on my own, depressed, stuck on this machine, 23 and a half hours a day, uh, can't eat, can only drink half a glass of water a day. I had disposable income, huge amounts of disposable income. I wasn't buying food anymore. So I used to buy just large amounts of skunk. I used to just knock myself out because life was pretty <coughs> crap, to be honest with you. And I just wanted to knock myself out. I didn't want to deal with life. And, uh, and my lithiums and my salts, everything in my body was in disarray at that point. They didn't know exactly what was going on. I, I managed to get rid of the bag eventually and now I just have the lime. But it was a bit of a nightmare at that point. And I started thinking this really isn't a great quality of life. And, uh, and I really, I don't know if I want to be around anymore. And actually, I. I don't think I want to be around, and I think the time's come to go. And uh, if you understand the way the, the catheter works, I realised it was kind of like a little bit like a hand grenade. Like all I needed to do was undo the bung from the line, and I'll bleed to death and have a heart attack pretty quickly. Right? So I had a, a very easy way out if I wanted to get out. And I couldn't stop thinking about the idea of just bowing out, killing myself, get, leave, you know, I didn't want to be on the uh, planet anymore. And, uh, and I spent the whole day, but I don't know if any of you have ever felt suicidal, right? You don't have to rush all at once, right? But I don't know if any of you have ever felt suicidal, but you have to write a note if you're going to kill yourself. There's a lot of pressure behind that note, right? And there really is. And I remember writing what I thought was the most beautiful, eloquent tone to sort of leave behind me. And I realised when I got to the bottom of writing this letter that I thought was well written and made my point and said what I wanted to say to the rest of the world, I realised I'd left my mate Dave off of the uh, letter. And I actually contemplated for a moment the idea that Dave was going to go up to my parents at my funeral and go, you know, Carol Warren, I'm devastated, I'm so sorry to hear about your loss. Did he mention me in the letter? He didn't. What a bastard, right? I couldn't see that that was going to happen, but I couldn't stop thinking about, I think I want to go. And um, I was torturing myself every day as well because I would watch cookery programs from morning till night when I couldn't eat and I was smoking large amounts of skunk. That's torturing yourself with the munchies, right? It's really not good, right? I could have salivated to death in that room, right? 
So I'm thinking I want to bow out, and I, and I had to think about it. And obviously, I, I don't know if you realise, but with Crohn's, and particularly with my situation, the reason that I need the uh, nutritional fluid is I don't absorb. I don't take anything in from the nutrition I have, um, or from the food that I do eat. So I thought, OK, I want to bow out. And I thought, OK, well, um, well what I'll do is uh, I'll run a bath, because that seems to be what people do when they want to kill themselves, right? And I thought, well, I'll run a bath, um, and I better put some clothes on because I don't want to be found naked. That would be embarrassing, <laughs> right? That's the kind of stuff that actually goes through your head. I don't want to be found naked. That would be embarrassing, right? So, uh, so I, I got some clothes. I, I found an old pair of jeans. I, I'd lost a bit of weight. They were a bit baggy on me, but a cool pair of 501s. If I was going to go, I was going to go in style, right? And I found this cool pair of 501s. I put on a, a cool T-shirt. I put on train. I actually got in the bath in trainers, right? And um, I made a large pile of joints, right, a whole plate piled high with spliffs. And on my, right, uh, on my left hand side, I had a bottle of Jameson's. Right? And I took a massive, massive overdose. I really was trying to cover all the angles. right? There was no phone in the room. It wasn't a cry for help. I knew what I was doing. So I had a pile of joints, I had the Jameson's, large amount of painkillers. And, uh, and for a while, I just sat in this bath and I would have a swig of uh, Jameson's and I'd have a puff on a joint and then I'd have a swig of Jameson's and then I'd have a puff on a joint and then a swig of Jameson's and a puff of joint. And after a while, I thought, actually, this isn't all bad, right? <laughs> if I'm honest with you, right? That did cross my mind, right? But I really thought I wanted to go. And, and over the course of those two hours, I blacked out a few times. I couldn't quite get, you know, I still was too... Too scared to do that final operation of twisting the bung off, but you know, I was hoping at least the painkillers were going to do their job. And obviously, I wasn't in the right mind when I was going through with this. You know, my lithiums and salts and my body chemicals, body chemistry was in disarray. I was contributing to that by smoking skunk, so I really wasn't in the right mind. But I suddenly had this moment of wonderful clarity, right, as I was lying there in the bath. It was just amazing <coughs> where suddenly I clicked back into my own headspace. And suddenly I became self-aware for a moment. And I started to laugh, right? I looked down at myself in the bath in these jeans and I started to laugh, right? And the reason I started to laugh is I swear to God, the thought suddenly came into my head. You've been lying in this bath for two hours now. The jeans should fit pretty good. <laughs> right, I swear to God, right? That it was that laugh that made me think, hang on, maybe you've done something wrong here, right? And I got up, I got out of the bath, I, 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 dripping wet and I thought like what the hell are you doing and I thought I can't phone anyone how can you phone anyone and go yeah I tried to kill myself but even that I failed at right <laughs> you can't do that right so I went on the internet I wanted to find out what you have to do so I went to this website www what do you do if you try to kill yourself but didn't really mean to do it dot com <laughs> right and according to that I shouldn't make myself sick and I kept myself up all night right and uh, and I was high to be honest with you for about two weeks I was high I was kind of manic because I tried to kill myself, not a doctor, not that the doctors have tried to kill me, mind, right? But, but you know, the doctors always put my life at risk and they were always the ones that got the glory and saved my life. And for the first time, I actually felt like, well, I put my life at risk and I, I brought myself back from it, right? It was a bit bizarre, but I felt empowered. For about two weeks, I was really high from the whole experience. After about two weeks, obviously, the depression hit home and I got really, really down and I needed to call friends and to call my parents, get some help. And uh, my parents took me to my doctor, right? And he was uh, not a GP that knew me. He was a locum doctor. He'd never seen me before. And we explained to him what I'd done and the overdose I'd taken. And the doctor said, uh, no, you didn't, you, didn't take that, you didn't take that overdose. And I went, no, no, I did. And he went, no, 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 no you, you didn't. And I went, no, I did. That, that's exactly what I took. And he said, there's no way you took those pills in that combination. Why not? because that's enough to kill four people. Three to four people, you should be dead. Yeah, well, I, I didn't die, but I did take the overdose. But you know why I didn't die? I don't absorb, <laughs> right? So the very thing that I was trying to kill was the very thing that saved my life, to be honest with you, right? And then I was lucky enough that I found stand-up, or stand-up found me. And, uh, and the feed's been great ever since. It's been seven years, eight years now since that event. And, uh, and life's gone from strength to strength. And with you guys, to be honest, you don't realise how important you are to me. Because my point is, I tried to kill myself eight years ago, and I'm glad for every day I've had since. 
but also I wouldn't have had every day since without your help, right? Because without your feed, I'm fucked, excuse my French, right? But that's the truth. Without your feed, I'm buggered. So I really need you guys to be a tight unit, a great team and everything else because that helps me no end, right? And, uh, and I'm really pleased, it's really, it's really an honour for me, to be honest, to meet all of you today, right? And I know that some of you have, maybe have nothing to do with my personal feed, but you're all a team, you all work together and without all of you doing that, I wouldn't be as lucky as I am because getting feed sent over to Australia, I know that there are other companies that do this kind of stuff that don't do it as good. Um, <laughs> but I know there are other companies, and I'm really thankful that I'm with you guys. Um, now, there's a little thing that I will say before I, I, I finish. Um, it's weird, I don't always talk about my, my health and my comedy, although sometimes it comes into it, right? But you do notice if you have a health condition that people treat you a little bit differently, right? They patronise you, they don't necessarily mean anything by it, but they'll wrap you in cotton wool, right? My parents did that, obviously. Social services sorted it out, right? But that kind of thing, <laughs> that's right, there was a joke, right? But, but that sort of thing happens, right? Now, I went away with a bunch of lads on holiday, right? A bunch of straight lads. And straight lads, when we're together, the way one straight lad tells another straight lad, you're my mate, you're my mate. I love you, right? <laughs> we punch each other. Right, you know what I'm talking about. It's the closest we get to it. We can't say it. We don't go broke back on it or anything like that, right? <laughs> broke back mountain where mountain men were mounting men. I always thought that was a better tagline, to be honest, right? But, but all the lads on this holiday when I went away, everybody was punching everybody, but no one would punch me. And that actually really bothered me, right? It was emasculating. It was disempowering. I said, lads, lads, treat me the same as everybody else, right? If you prick me, do I not bleed? Right? And my friend Tom, and I love him for this, right? My friend Tom punched me, right? No, I do, and I love him for it, right? I punched Tom back. I think I broke his fucking jaw, right? But, <laughs> but I punched Tom back. It made me feel better about myself, made me feel empowered as a man. I guess what I'm asking you guys in future to take from this. You meet someone who's vulnerable, ill, depressed, don't patronise them. Fucking punch them. <laughs> oh, I swear to God you'll make their day. It's empowering, right? It's weird. I did that recently at a gig in Liverpool. They seem to love me. <laughs> Kick the shit out of me after the gig, though. Um, you guys have been absolutely lovely. Thank you. Um, I'm Gareth Bluna. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks. <coughs>